the seven biggest behaviour mistakes and how to avoid making them. So the number one biggest behaviour mistake is lack of clarity about expectations. So if you're not clear with the children on what it is that you want, how are they supposed to be able to do it? So you say to them something like, I want you to listen quietly. Now if you say to me as a kid, I want you to listen quietly, what you're actually telling me is that it's okay for me to talk while you're talking, so long as I do it quietly. So you end up with kids whispering to each other and you say, I told you to listen. And they look at you and they, they think, well, hang on a sec, you, you said quietly, I'm being quiet. And they get confused. So tell them what you mean. Be clear about what you mean. They're children, they need clarity. So the second big behaviour mistake is when you have a lack of consistency in your expectations. So you tell the class what it is that you want. I want one voice. And then the children start to talk over you and you don't do anything about it. Or you talk over them. So what you're showing them is that you say that you want this thing, but you don't actually follow through. And if you operate in that way, they start to believe that they can't trust you, that you don't mean what they say, and that they can basically behave how they want. So the third big behaviour mistake is one that we've all made, or pretty much all of us, it's shouting. So the class are being naughty, and you're trying to keep your temper down. But gradually, gradually, you feel the red mist rising. And you get to that point where you just feel like you're going to explode and you say, children, will you please listen? And what you have shown the children at that moment is that they can wind you up. They can get a rise out of you. Now, if you think back to when you were at school, I suspect there was probably a teacher that you knew you could wind up. And when Mr. Jones, let's call him, when he was getting wound up and he was screaming at you and the spittle was flying across the room and he was going bright red, you weren't sat there going, oh, poor Mr. Jones. Well, maybe you were. Maybe you were the nice kid. But some of your friends, possibly not, they were sat there going, yes, got Jonesy again. Fantastic. So don't give them an incentive by shouting at them because then they will learn that they can wind you up. So the fourth big behaviour mistake that a lot of us make is that we let our emotions rule our behaviours in front of the children. So they see when they're getting to us. They understand that they can make us sad, they can make us angry, they can make us wound up, they can make us turn into a nag. One of the things I say to, particularly to new teachers is that as a teacher you have to learn that how you feel inside it's not necessarily how you can present yourself. In fact, you have to fight your instincts. So it's a perfectly natural response to get wound up by the kids. But the minute they see you getting wound up, they've won. It's a perfectly natural response to get upset if you spend hours planning a lesson and the children disrespect it. But once again, if they see you getting upset, then they see that your emotions are close to the surface and that they can bring them out at will. Now, the fifth big behaviour mistake that a lot of us make, and you'll catch yourself doing it, I promise you, next time you're in the classroom, is asking rhetorical questions. So once again, the kids are winding you up. They're out of their seats, they're not working, and you allow your emotions to take control, and you go, why aren't you working? Why are you out of your seat? So the kid who you said, why aren't you working to, goes, well, I'm not particularly engaged with this lesson, miss. You didn't appear to make much effort. I don't think it appears to be Ofsted outstanding. The kid who's out of their seat turns to you and goes, well, I'm out of my seat, miss, because your lessons aren't particularly active and I'm a kinesthetic learner. So the minute you ask them a question, you open up a space for them to give you an answer, often a cheeky one. So unless you mean it as a question, so can I offer you some support? Don't ask it as one. 
Say it as a statement instead. So, big behaviour mistake number six is when the teacher does all the work to get behaviour sorted. So you're constantly calling to the kids to come back to you. You're constantly on top of them trying to get them to behave. The problem is if you do too much of the work and expect too little of them in terms of self-discipline, then you end up with a situation where they feel that you should be making the effort to bring them to you. What you really want is them to be able to self-regulate, to regulate their own behaviour, and they won't learn to do that if you're constantly intervening to regulate it for them. And behaviour mistake number seven, and it's a real big one, is when you stick to the front of the room. There can be that sense of feeling quite defensive. You don't want to get in amongst the kids, particularly if they're really difficult, because you kind of feel safer in your space at the front of the room. But the problem is that often the misbehaviour is happening at the back of the room. If you keep mobile around the space, particularly when the kids are working at their desks, then they never quite know when you're going to pop up behind them. So one great tip to encourage you to do this is to touch all four walls during the course of each lesson. That way you'll make sure you get to everywhere in the room. Something else to bear in mind as well about movement is that you will tend to teach slightly to your dominant side. So if you're right-handed, to your right. If you're left-handed, to your left. So what can happen is the children to the right get most of your attention and there's a child right off on the left-hand corner who realises that they're completely under the radar. So keep moving around the space, keep your eyes moving around the space as well. <laughs>